research. Palantir Technologies is a controversial AI and data analytics company with undeniable global reach and influence. Its impact has touched everything from corporate supply chains to your local hospitals to tracking and locating Osama bin Laden. Is Palantir the evil spy company, some people say? Or is it the company that could pave the way to a new future through artificial intelligence? Palantir was founded in 2003 by Peter Thiel, Alex Karp, Joe Lonsdale, Stephen Cohen, and a few others. The roots of the company can be traced back to the legendary PayPal Mafia, a group of former PayPal employees and founders who went on to establish and expand various technology companies like Tesla, LinkedIn, SpaceX, Affirm, YouTube, Yelp, Yammer, and others. However, Palantir's beginnings differed significantly from the other companies mentioned. It was born out of the aftermath of the tragic events of 9-11 when venture capitalist Peter Thiel wanted to create a solution to help the United States government and intelligence community to effectively analyze and connect diverse data sources. He believed that the government needed a powerful tool to identify and prevent future terrorist attacks, and that existing data analysis software was not up to the task. Peter Thiel needed to find a capable leader to turn his vision into reality. In 2004, he recruited Alex Karp, a former classmate from Stanford Law School, to join the company as its CEO. Peter Thiel was impressed by Karp's intellectual capabilities and his expertise in philosophy, which he believed would be valuable in shaping Palantir's mission and principles. Karp, who had previously worked as an entrepreneur and academic, had a background in philosophy and social theory, shared Thiel's passion for creating a tool that could enhance intelligence analysis and prevent future terrorist attacks. Under Karp's leadership, Palantir began to develop its software, which aimed to connect and analyze vast amounts of data from various sources to enable better decision-making and intelligence gathering. CARP played a crucial role in refining the company's product and establishing its core values, emphasizing the importance of privacy and civil liberties. His unconventional approach to management, which involved fostering a strong company culture based on trust and intellectual rigor, helped Palantir attract top talent from diverse fields such as data science, engineering, and government intelligence. The inspiration for Palantir's name comes from J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings trilogy, where Palantir were magical seeing stones used by characters to communicate and see events in distant locations. This name choice reflects Palantir's mission to provide powerful tools that enable organizations to gain insight and make sense of complex data. In its early years, Palantir focused primarily on providing data analysis and integration services to intelligence agencies, including the United States military and other intelligence agencies. Their software was designed to enable analysts to connect diverse data sources and conduct advanced analysis for national security purposes. Palantir gained attention for its work in counterterrorism and intelligence operations, as its software proved instrumental in identifying patterns and uncovering actionable insights from massive amounts of data. Palantir gained major attention for its successful collaborations with government agencies, including the United States Department of Defense and the Central Intelligence Agency. These partnerships allowed Palantir to refine its software and tailor it to meet the specific needs of intelligence analysts. The company's ability to integrate data from various sources and provide powerful analytical tools set it apart from existing data analysis software. Palantir started to expand its team rapidly, attracting top talent from Silicon Valley and all over the world. The company's unique company culture, fostered by CEO Alex Karp, emphasized trust, intellect, and a commitment to Western democracy with a focus on privacy and civil liberties. This culture played a significant role in attracting and retaining talented individuals who shared Palantir's mission and values. In 2007, Palantir launched its first version of Gotham, a cutting-edge analytics platform with integrated geospatial capabilities tailored to address the specific needs of military and intelligence operators. Gotham 
revolutionized data attributes, enabling geospatial searches, allowing users to define search parameters such as radius, root, polygon, map layer, and then present the results as layered points on a visualized map. In 2009, Palantir started gaining major recognition on the global stage when its software was utilized by Information Warfare Monitor to uncover and destroy two China-based cyber espionage networks, GhostNet and the Shadow Network. GhostNet was used to target computers in 103 countries, including the Dalai Lama's office, and infiltrating multiple NATO computers. The Shadow Network successfully hacked into Indian security and defense systems, stealing top-secret documents related to Indian security and NATO troop activity in Afghanistan. Later in 2009, Palantir launched its commercial division with J.P. Morgan as its first client. In June 2010, Palantir once again gained significant public attention when Vice President Joe Biden conducted a press conference at the White House announcing a successful collaboration, highlighting their instrumental role in assisting RAT analysts in uncovering cases of fraud. Biden specifically credited the success to the software developed and deployed by Palantir for the federal government. Additionally, he revealed plans to deploy this capability to other government agencies, beginning with Medicare and Medicaid. It is estimated that around this time, Palantir earned their coveted IL-6 security clearance, which is the highest level of clearance any company can hold. Only three companies hold this level of clearance to date, including Amazon, Microsoft, and Palantir. One year later, on May 2, 2011, CIA analysts used Palantir's platform to find, track, and ultimately kill Osama bin Laden. Palantir continued its rapid growth, receiving additional funding and expanding its client base to include 12 groups within the U.S. government, including the CIA DHS, CDC, and other military organizations. In 2013, Palantir started to grow in terms of valuation, disclosing over $196 million in funding and projecting to close nearly $1 billion in contracts for 2014. Later that year, Palantir raised an additional $450 million in a financing round, increasing its value to over $9 billion. In subsequent financing rounds, the company aimed to raise $400 million in 2014 and later raised $880 million by December 2015, swelling its valuation to over $20 billion. Palantir also made acquisitions, including Kimono Labs and Silk, to enhance its data capabilities. Over the years, Palantir continued to refine and expand its software offerings, introducing Palantir Foundry, a data integration and management platform that aimed to simplify the process of data analysis and enable organizations to leverage their data assets effectively. Foundry enables organizations to compile and redesign data and analytics through ontology, which assimilates data into a comprehensive semantic model of the organization structure. Palantir's software gained a reputation for its ability to handle complex and sensitive data, and the company became known for its work in privacy-preserving technologies. The software was designed with strong security measures, ensuring that data remained protected and confidential. In 2019, Palantir doubled down on its commercial business, launching Palantir Apollo, a platform that enables customers to build their own data-driven applications and workflows. Apollo was built out of the need for customers to use multiple public and private cloud platforms as part of their infrastructure. Apollo orchestrates updates to configurations and software in its Foundry and Gotham platforms using its heterogeneous software architecture. Palantir made its debut on the public stock market in 2020 under ticker symbol PLTR through a direct public listing. This method of public listing did not please Wall Street as it bypasses the lucrative IPO process which provides much higher returns to institutional investors in the primary market, Palantir's DPO gave investors, individual and institutional, the same opportunity to invest in the company, which further contributes to its rising popularity with retail investors. Later, in 2020, Palantir went on to partner with the United States government 
and the NHS in the UK to support widespread health efforts using its software, Palantir Foundry. In April 2023, Palantir introduced the Artificial Intelligence Platform, AIP, a revolutionary system that integrates large language models into privately operated networks. This transformational platform allows users to query their vast and segmented organizational data in LLM fashion similar to ChatGPT while maintaining specific user data access and controls. Many companies are already using the software, including Sintra, CPKC, and Eaton. The company also showcased this application in a military context, demonstrating how a military operator could utilize the platform to deploy operations and receive responses through an AI chatbot. CEO Alex Karp acknowledged the potential risks associated with generative artificial intelligence, emphasizing that the product would not grant the AI the ability to autonomously conduct targeting operations. Instead, it would require human oversight to ensure responsible decision-making. Later in 2023, Palantir launched FedStart, its latest product which leverages its experience with gaining high-level U.S. government security and its platform in a SaaS or software as a service offering to help other commercial companies gain access to use government contracts. This service provides tremendous value to commercial companies who do not have the resources to pursue IL clearance as the process of accessing and winning government contracts can be very complex, expensive, and time-consuming. Quoting the company website, companies that are part of the FedStart program benefit from FedRAMP and IL-5 compliance managed by Palantir, with Palantir responsible for government, ATO conversations, compliance artifacts, continuous monitoring, and control assessments. Today, Palantir continues to serve a wide range of clients, including government agencies, financial institutions, and major corporations. With CARP at the helm, Palantir grew from a small startup to a highly influential and controversial technology company, providing its software to the most influential governments and largest enterprises around the world. CARP's leadership continues to shape Palantir's mission of using data analysis to empower government and commercial entities in their decision-making processes. Its software and services are used globally for everything from fraud detection to supply chain optimization, to risk management and national security. Palantir's history demonstrates its evolution from a company primarily focused on serving the intelligence community to becoming a key player in the broader data analytics and software industry. With its commitment to data-driven decision-making and privacy protection, Palantir remains at the forefront of enabling organizations to unlock insights from complex data and make informed decisions in an increasingly data-centric world. So what do you think? Is Palantir an evil spy company? Or a global innovation leader in AI and software, or something else? Comment your thoughts below. That's it for today's research video. If you liked this video, tap the like and subscribe button. If you didn't, tap the dislike button. Either way, thank you kindly.